So guys, I had this customer send this amplifier into me and it smelled kind of bad and when I took the back off, I could not believe the extent of damage that I saw. I knew instantly that this was going to be a no fix for the customer, but I wanted to do a live stream on it anyway because I thought it would be very entertaining to go through the board and see how bad the damage was with you guys and to see if we could get any of this board working. That live stream turned into an absolute roller coaster ride and went on well into the night. So here is a condensed version of that live stream and stick around see how much of this board we managed to get working. So strap in, grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and enjoy because you're not going to want to miss this. Hello amigos, amigos, how's it going? It is time for one of these live streams. Customer sent this amplifier in, um, but yeah, we are not, the, the idea of tonight is not to repair it. The idea of tonight is to have some fun with it, see what we can get working if anything like i just what i'm just really curious to see how bad this is and see you know what survived and what didn't this is aptly named the apocalypse well it looks like a freaking apocalypse went off inside here so yep yeah, death bounce or death bounce as everyone on facebook seems to think it's called so this is basically a sound digital 12k uh, made in el chino so let's first of all take a look at the power supply section usually when you get burned amplifiers it's the power supply section that burns the worst however in this case the power supply mosfets generally look okay ignore this bit of charcoal put that over here for a moment another bit of charcoal here let's just remove that for a moment so yeah the power supply section generally looks all right now if we move over to the rail capacitor area this is where stuff starts looking a bit funky so these rail caps here look absolutely fine uh, this fan uh, that looks a bit that looks a bit melted doesn't it just a little bit more oh and that one there oh that one's properly cooked up <laughs> that is no longer a fan that is just becoming a, a piece of molten plastic at this point okay cool cool interesting stuff that will never spin again and this one as well doesn't spin either that is completely locked up and then we can take it over here to the rectifiers now these are probably fine they're just covered in soot the most of the damage occurred over here so if we take a look over here this is where the fire will have happened and started so we've got output MOSFETs here which may be okay you've got these these metal heatsink clamps these have well these have melted it's melted the aluminium the metal there which is pretty wild and you can if you want to google how hot this was google the melting temperature of aluminium or aluminum and you'll you'll find out what kind of temperatures were going on inside this amplifier when it was on fire so yeah that looks pretty bad we've got capacitors all around here which have exploded and they would have just exploded from the heat they would have um, just vented purely from the insane temperatures that were inside this PCB at the time. So you got a couple there with all the uh, the kind of plastic stuff coming. Out. That one's created like a little mound. <laughs> Look at that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, and you got these great big bits of charcoal. These these are remnants of the uh, the cap that would have been there. You can see that there's these two film capacitors. There would have been one here and one here. Uh, the output inductor, um, it does look a bit burnt there, obviously from the fire, but I imagine it's maybe going to be okay. Um, you know, this is just, uh, it, it probably would have um, boiled away some of the um, insulation. And the board over here with all these surface mount components, see this is all um, soot covered. So it, we're not sure, like these components aren't necessarily burnt or damaged, but they're covered in soot from uh, all the smoke and fire that was elsewhere on the board. They may be okay, they may have failed due to the high temperatures in here. Um, so we'll have to find out. Also, if you look over here, we've got melted um, you know, we've got a melted thing here for the for the remote, and then we've got melted gain and low pass knobs there. They're all kind of sagging down and melted away. RCA block is melted as well. So uh, yeah, pretty intense stuff. I think what the plan is for this evening is to just strip this board down, take it out of the heatsink, see how bad the damage to the PCB is, and then just see but if after we've cut away all of the dead um, PCB and you know dead components, see what's left of the board and see what 
actually still powers up. See if we can get any signals from the PIC chip to the power supply fit. See if we can get the power supply up and running. You see if we can build rail voltage. Um, you know, see what's going on in the output section. So it could be a pretty fun stream. There's nothing left of it. Like, it's just crispy and crunchy. Like, it, it, it's just gonna, it's gonna completely disappear. It's gonna completely fall through. Like, it's just gonna crack away. So that's going to be interesting when we get that out of the heatsink. So let's continue taking these apart. <laughs> Condone yourself like a professional says, this reminds me of the time I fell asleep with a shepherd's pie in the oven. <laughs> I actually, when I was younger, I microwaved a croissant for five minutes on high and it looked a bit like this. Wow. Guys, holy s***. Oh, oh my days. Oh my days. How does it, how does it look underneath? There's nothing left of that half of the board. Okay, they've got all the crap that's in the heatsink. Put this shit in the bin. So if we take a look at the back of the PCB, we can see the extent of the damage here. None of this survives. That all needs to be cut out. Yeah, so the idea of this um, stream and this repair is not actually to fix the amplifier. I'm just really curious to see what we can make work. Like, what can we do with this? Can we make any part of this amp work again? It, it just f dis disintegrates. So this would, would be the original high voltage trace, I think, for the rail voltage. There's nothing left. So yeah, check out this fan. This fan is never going to spin again. Actually, I wonder, we, we might be able to get this fan spinning, spinning again if we cut away the bit that's melted against the blade. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So what do you reckon then, guys? Does the fan still work? Now we've freed the bearing, now we've freed the spinning part. Do you reckon this fan still works? I'm going to solder up some wires to it. We're going to see if it still works, shall we? It's still catching on something. Oh! Oh! Oh, shit. It freaking works! No way! That's hilarious. Alright, let's crank it up to 14 volts, just for a bit of fun. <laughs> That's pretty hilarious, not going to lie. Well, okay, I'll put that in my spare parts bank then. Can uh, use this fan for something. Okay, so I don't think the same can be said for this fan. This is this is the other fan. I I got I've got a feeling, guys, that that we're not gonna be able to recover that one. I've I've got a feeling that that one's that one's a bit of a lost cause. It's gonna, I'm just gonna cut off the uh, the shroud. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. We do have some spinach here. Now I've I've released it. F it, I'm gonna I'm gonna hook it up. I am gonna hook it up. Okay, guys, place bets now. Does this one still spin? You know what Lewis Rossman says? Fan spin equals a successful repair. No fucking way! <laughs> this is fucking working! Holy s***! Oh, he's not liking that. Well, that gives me good confidence for, for the rest of this board, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> So what do you reckon this capacitor reads in? Should, should we read this capacitor? So this capacitor looks like this. Okay, so these capacitors are supposed to be uh, 2200 microfarads, 200 volt. So, okay, what are we saying then, my friend? Okay, uh, it's not far off. It's not that far off. It is still reading as an 1872 microfarad capacitor. So it's lost a fair bit. Like it's supposed to be 2200. Uh, it's reading as an 1872, and the ESR is only 0.13 of an ohm. That might be a bit high. I'm not sure what the um, ESR is supposed to be on these ones. Let's 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 see what this one reads. So this one is is much worse. This be completely burnt off. Okay, well this one's much worse. This one reads as uh, about 600 microfarad with an ESR of 1.5 ohms. That is. 
and we can put it in our spare parts box. Like, I just have to relabel it. I just need to get a sticky label and write instead, like, cross out the 2200 and write 1800 microfarad, and it's good to go. <laughs> okay, we're, we're kind of slowly working our way towards powering the board up and seeing whether anything in the power supply section has survived, uh, or the you know the PIC drive circuit and stuff like that. We're lucky. We're lucky. This this part of the board survived. Otherwise, this this would be cut in half by now. What I want to try and do is I want to try and get rid of um, a lot of the carbonized board so that if the power supply does start switching, I don't want it to start shorting high voltage through the carbonized PCB. So we're going to get to a point kind of here where the board kind of stops being as carbonized and the, the top and bottom layers, you know, they, they kind of start, start being their own thing again. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut off and remove from the board the, the other obvious like um, blown shorted components like this capacitor here for example. I'm going to remove all the shorted output MOSFETs as well. We're going to remove any shorted power supply FETs. And then we're getting closer to maybe running some power to the board and seeing what's going on over at the control circuit. Another important one is I want to make sure that I remove this um, network connector on the side because that might have um, like VCC voltage on it that, that it sends to a base remote and that's all melted and shorted together so I don't want that to short out any v VCC voltages that we end up applying to this just for fun. So we're going to spray all this up with isopropyl alcohol, get this cleaned up so we can see the components over here on this part of the board. Now uh, these yellow tantalum capacitors, these are quite sensitive to heat, so I imagine these might be dead as well. You know, there's a couple of, tr couple of traces here that are just dangling around. Cut those off. Wow, okay. Holy sh**. This side of the amplifier is actually intact. Guys, these FETs are fine. If we can get some kind of, if we can get enough VCC over to the board over here, we might actually be able to create a half bridge amplifier out of this. Obviously it's a full bridge amplifier, but um, with with only one half of the board remaining, we might actually be able to get some music playing from this half of the amplifier the, you know, the, as like a half bridge. So these FETs are all fine. These are IRFB 4227s, which are in high demand at the moment. So let's go ahead and check the power supply section now. Let's see what we have. Did we, did we lose the power supply? Yes, looks like we have some shorts on the power supply section. That might have been the only dead power supply FET. We might have only had one single dead power supply FET, guys. Because now, when I probe between plus and minus, we're actually getting an increase there in resistance, which means that we're charging the power supply uh, caps. Uh, now the question is, where, where's the power supply MOSFET driver? <laughs> that might be toasted. That is over here, this bad boy. Uh, nice big package for once. Uh, usually they use a tiny little JSON package which is a bit of a nightmare to solder. So provided that's not damaged, we will start building <laughs> some, uh, some power supply switching. So I think it's time for power. I was checking to see where the traces for the power supply drive goes towards the MOSFETs. It looks like it goes over through here. See, see all these traces here? I think these are the traces that come from the power supply section and that go over to the, to the PIC and to the power supply driver. I think this might actually work. This might actually try and power up. Right, turn the power supply down first to zero volts. Right, now let's slowly start increasing the power supply and make sure we don't have any uh, current draw. So 3.8 volts, there's no, no, no current draw. Okay, so we are at tw uh, 12 volts worth of input and we don't have any current draw. So there's nothing leaking in the board so far. We do actually have voltage coming from... <laughs> Okay, we have rail and half rail on the output FETs. Okay. <laughs> oh my days. How f***ing hilarious would it be if we are able to get audio from this? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the oscilloscope probe on the power supply FET. I'm going to show you the scope screen and we're going to see whether we have any power supply switching. Three, two, one. Oh my god! We have the correct f***ing pulses! That means that the PIC is working, 
That means that the, the power supply drive I see is working. Right, so these little pulses that I'm giving to the uh, the board now will be building some rail voltage. Yes, we are, we are building fucking rail voltage. Look at this. With every pulse, we're building some rail voltage, and it doesn't really seem to be disappearing either. It's it's staying steady. We have this half of the amplifier, which is not going to work. Okay, we know that it's not going to work because it's missing fats, missing half of the board. Now, when this half of the amplifier died, it may have killed the driver. So I think what might be a good idea is to remove the drive buffers and the drive IC from this half of the amplifier, perhaps. If there's any issues with the drive buffers or the drive IC on this half of the amplifier, it might prevent the other half from working because it might pull down the VCC voltage that it needs, whatever. I don't want to I don't want to put 200 volts DC into this board that looks like this, yeah? You understand why I don't want to give this board 200 volts DC? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this amplifier into what's called service mode. And by putting it into service mode, we prevent the power supply effects from switching, okay? So the power supply effects don't receive any drive. We trick the PIC chip into thinking that it has full rail voltage available. So we, we bridge over a couple of wires over here and we trick the PIC into thinking that the full rail voltage is built. When it thinks the full rail voltage is built, it will then activate the output section. But the output section doesn't have any rail voltage because we have disabled the power supply section. But what we do is we feed the output section with an injected rail voltage, like a nice safe low voltage, maybe like 30 volts or 40 volts, to get the, 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 the output section oscillating, to get some switching going on in the output section. You know what, it is tempting just to hardwire some FETs over onto this side of the board though, you know. All we need to do is we just need to mimic this side. We have this half of the amplifier which, which wasn't affected by the failure. So all we need to do is we just need to mimic what's, what we have over this side and put it over onto the other side where there's missing board. Um, so I could create a, a low and high side over on this side of the board and maybe get both half of, halves of the bridge up and running. In order to put the amp into service mode, we need to remove the power supply uh, MOSFET driver. We also need to remove, uh, I think it's this resistor here that goes to pin 14. And we need to connect up um, 12 volts through a 5.7K ohm resistor to pin 14 of the PIC. And that will trick it into thinking that rail voltage is present. There we go. Uh, so we've removed the power supply MOSFET driver, so the, mo the power supply MOSFETs won't oscillate anymore. One last thing that we need to do, um, the power supply MOSFETs actually use the driver as a pull down resistor for the gate. So without the driver in place, we actually risk um, killing the power supply MOSFETs just from the gate building up its own electric charge and turning the FET on by itself. So we need to take some high value resistors, well actually we just, we just need to take a little bit of uh, wire actually, sorry, and we just need to short the gate to source on the power supply FETs to prevent them from turning on. And that should also occur up here as well, yep we do, excellent stuff. So now the power supply FETs won't try and self destruct. So the amplifier is now tricked into thinking that it has 200 volts on the rails. So it's going to try and activate the output section. Obviously you can see that we are clearly missing a good chunk of the output section, but this half of the output section remains intact with MOSFETs not damaged and probably a okay drive circuit. So we're going to turn it on, we're going to see what it tries to do. I have no idea what's going to happen. Nothing's going to explode, there's going to be nothing dramatic happen, but I want to see what it tries to do with the output section here. We have 5 volts there, so let's power it up and let's see what happens on the scope screen. So I'm probing the low side drain. Okay. Okay, it just goes straight up to, it goes pretty much straight up to 12 volts. Got no switching present. Uh, no LEDs, I imagine LEDs are all burnt out. Up here, there's a little butt converter uh, that generates power for the um, output drivers up here. So I'm going to see whether this is oscillating or switching at all. Okay, we don't seem to have any operation up here on this little butt converter. Uh, looks like we have 12 volts on all of the pins. So that looks like there's actually a ground reference up here missing. That's interesting. That could be quite simple to fix. And so by reconnecting that ground reference, we might actually bring the output section to life. 
Um, these boards are known for having ground traces running kind of on both sides of the board that need to be connected to each other. So I'm thinking actually there's a ground trace up here. See this ground up here? Ah, see this isn't actually connected to ground anymore. So I need to run a small wire and connect this output side ground to the main main ground. Yeah, see that's that's actually just going straight to 12 volts. So I need to ground this part of the board over to the main ground and that might actually solve a lot of the problems we're having right now. Connector up on there. So now that's connected up. Let's see what it does now that's connected up. Okay, ready? So we oh oh we have a bit of attempted oscillation there. Holy sh it's trying to switch. Wow, it's it's a, it's a very very slow frequency, but there there is some some attempt at switching there. We have a blue light and a clip light. So obviously we're missing a lot of the filter capacitors here that would usually be responsible for for grounding some of that noise. So that's a little sign of life. Let's go over here and probe the um, probe the little butt converter. Okay, that's that is kind of working, although at the same frequency. That's at 50 hertz, which is also what that is. So there's like a lack of there's like something missing. Uh, where is it? Uh, on pin 11, we should have VCC. So that should just be nice straight DC. Okay, so that is not actually that's actually not staying as DC. So that means that the um, the VCC is like coming, kind of dropping in and out, and that might be because one of these ICs over this side is actually dead. We actually have 0.2 amps worth of current draw, which is a, a bit more than I would expect. So what I'm going to do is take my thermal imaging camera and see whether we can see if one of these chips is dead. Therefore, it's you know dropping that voltage. Yeah. The, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely cooking up. Yeah, one of the drive buffers over here is is straight up toasted. It's reaching like 60 degrees after like a few seconds. So I think it's a good idea to remove uh, the drivers in this area like I suggested earlier. Okay, so that's the two drive buffers removed. Let's see if that uh, has sorted out our excessive current draw. Yes, yeah, so you see now we only have 0.1 amps worth of current draw. So that's sorted that out a little bit. So let's now see what the output FET is doing on the low side drain. Okay, see so now we've lost that kind of 50 hertz thing that was going on before. We just have straight DC now. So we don't have any switching, but that's probably because the other half of the amplifier isn't up and running. So we can maybe trick this into giving us some switching. I'm going to fit some MOSFETs over onto this side of the board, and I'm going to wire like wire up a high side FET just just for jokes, and. Um, See if we can get the other side of the board working. I'd, I'd love to get. Let's take a look at the um, data sheet for the uh, 20957S again. So what we need presently is we need PWM going into pin three, CSH to be a certain voltage, and C shutdown. That also needs to be a specific value. Let's try applying some RCA signal. I've no idea if the uh, signal is going to make its way through because these potentiometers are all busted. There we go. Let's power up again, see if we get any signal on pin 3. Oh, sh we do! <laughs> Holy sh we actually do get a bit of signal on pin 3. We just need to trick the chip into, into coming alive now. We just need to feed it with the right voltages to trick it to coming alive. I think what we're going to do is we're going to feed CSD with about 5 volts. I'm just going to look to see, see on the board if there's like a 5 volt reference anywhere. I've just added a capacitor to a bunch of uh, caps that were missing there. Let's going to see if that makes any, any difference here. Oh, that made a difference! That actually switched for a lot longer than it has been so far. Pin 13 seemed to, when I grounded it, prevent the PIC throwing protection. Okay, so CSD is now connected up to about 4.7 volts instead. So let's see if that allows it to stay on. Okay, that does nothing. Maybe CSD needs to be like somewhere in between the two. It needs to be like somewhere in between like like five and ten. It needs to be like seven or something. Potential meter connected between VDD and CSD, and I should now be able to calibrate a voltage on CSD that allows this to stay operational. I think that might be what the issue is, but we'll see. Aha! 
Sh yeah! It stays on! F okay, now I have forced the amplifier to stay operational, but it is drawing a load of current. Right, so something something must be getting hot. If we're drawing 5 amps, something must be getting hot. So let's take a look on our thermal imaging camera and try and figure out... This, oh wow, this, this filter capacitor is getting roasty toasty hot over here. So the output filtering ductor must not be doing its job. If this capacitor is getting super duper hot, then it must not be doing its job. But what's going on there is clearly this output inductor is not designed to filter 23 kilohertz. So that switching frequency is way too low. So without that capacitor there, it's trying to build, it's trying to build oscillation. You can see there, it's trying, it, oh, it, it is kind of, but we got a, a, re, a really high frequency there now for some reason. I think we need to try and put some other kind of capacitance over here. Let's try doubling the capacitance. I want to see what happens if we double the capacitance on this output thing over here. Oh my god! We're not drawing any current anymore! We have... Oh my god! This is freaking oscillating and we have 0.3 amps worth of current draw. I think this is going to make audio. Now we're going to inject our own rail voltage because 16 volts worth of rad isn't going to do f all, is it? So we're going to put this board on top here and I'm going to take my rail voltage injection board which is this one because we don't want to put 200 volts to it because that's stupid just now. So let's go up to 30 volts. The amplifier is currently now powered up, but the duty cycle is like non-existent. Whereas when we go down to a lower voltage, the duty cycle is a bit more normal down there. Whereas when we start increasing the row voltage, the duty cycle starts taper, taping off. We can't, I don't think we can use this amplifier in half bridge. What I might just want to try and do is rebuild the other half of this amplifier and get both halves oscillating but with so much of the board missing, I don't know if like part of the feedback circuit is missing. Uh, it's tempting, it's tempting to hook up a couple of FETs on the other side. Okay, so they're the gate traces. So these ones are also likely to be the gate traces. Yeah, these are the traces that lead to the, to the gates. That's okay, we can rebuild those. Right, what do you reckon then guys? It is midnight here. I can do two things. We can either just call it a night. We got we got the amp up and running, didn't we? We got the power supply up and running. We got half of the amplifier up and running, making switch waves. That is like a miracle in itself. Do I spend half an hour putting in drivers, buffers, and a couple of random FETs in the other half of the board just to see whether it will oscillate both sides and we can make a little bit of audio? All right, yeah, okay, let's do it then. Let's do it, let's just see what happens. All right, there's a low side FET. So we're gonna have to create our own wires for the high side. That goes round here to this resistor, okay. This is like super janky, but I really don't care. Okay, let's see what it does then, shall we? I don't expect this to switch whatsoever, but let's just see what it does. Low side over here, amplifier coming on. Oh shit! It fing is switching! No way! It's very noisy over that side. I wonder why that is. Is that because there's no filter capacitor on that side perhaps? So with the speaker terminals connected together, oh shit. Something burns. When the speaker terminals are connected together, something f burns. Oh, there's no, uh, oh, there's no, duh. There's no output filter inductor, is there? Duh. Right, obviously, I need a filter inductor. Let's just quickly try and solder in this um, filter inductor. So that, that will be connected to the low side drain. Just whacking some fresh solder on this uh, inductor. I don't even know if if this inductor is going to want to solder to anything because it was so burnt up with this amplifier but we are I think I think if I connect up this inductor I think it might actually work guys I've no idea if this inductor is actually even intact I'm just guessing at this point like yeah it's burned but 
Okay, right, inductor is hooked back up. Moment of truth then with turning it on. Okay, so we have a sine wave going in. Ah, it, it seems to need a signal going in now to, to start oscillating. But as soon as we get rid of the signal, it stops working. If I connect the inductor up after it's already started self-oscillation, then it maintains self-oscillation. Okay, she's up and running. Audio is being produced. Do we have a sine wave? Yes, we do. Right, gentlemen and ladies, this is the point of oh, this 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 now is the this now is the the point where we could maybe hook up a speaker because I've got an I've got an audio sine wave on both of these speaker terminals now. Look, it's making a f***ing audio. Right, rail voltage injection time. Now we're going to inject some higher higher voltage rails to try and keep it alive and then we're going to hook up a speaker and we're going to make some audio and then then guys I think it's a freaking miracle okay there we are we are up and running we are up and running gentlemen now is the time that we connect a speaker this diamond audio 12 are you ready then this is the moment of truth oh my god <laughs> oh, it turned off. It turned off. I think that was overcurrent. I think I, my my bench power supply wasn't turned up enough. Uh, <laughs> did you hear it? It made audio. I can't believe that we got audio from this. Like, what the hell? How did that even happen? That is wild. You know. We've got one FET over there with like a gate resistor and no diodes and shit. So guys, the fact that this just produced audio means that this amp would be fully repairable to an extent provided we rebuilt the traces that are missing and put the rail capacitors back in place. This amp would be repairable to the point where it could do its rated power once again. Whether I will bother with that adventure or not, I don't know. Maybe when I'm bored one day. I can't believe it, that's more than I expected from this stream, uh, so I'm happy, <laughs> that's pretty hilarious. Um, and I don't know, maybe we'll re revisit this board sometime in the future when we see whether we can rebuild it back to its former glory, you know, just like whack some fets in and you know, build it all back up properly. Um, and thanks for sticking with me for so long, it's been a super, super long stream. I'm exhausted, it's 1am here with the answer 